Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to White Gaming. How is everybody doing? So we are back again today with some more Survive the Nights. And today we're going over the Alpha Dev Blog 30. Interior redesign and electrical grid. Holy crap, this is coming a lot sooner than I thought. But this electrical grid looks absolutely amazing. Oh, ha, ha, is all I'm going to say. It looks so goddamn cool. And uh, there's, there's loads of new features coming to the interior of houses. They're going to look so much different. Just, oh, words can't explain how cool some of these interiors. Well, just the one image that I've seen so far. These interiors are going to look dope, man. They're going to look absolutely beastie. I love it. They they actually look like they're run down. They've been left to rot and, and no, no one's in them. I, I'd love the opportunity. I know this is just got, like out on a limb and really random. But I'd love it if they sort of switch that round a little bit and you could upgrade these paint the walls make it nice and make it livable that'd be really cool i don't know if that's something that's planned in the future but um before we jump in thank you all so much for the support on twitch if you haven't already check out the description below the links to twitch are down there we stream survive the nights on thursdays at 8 p.m gmt and on tuesdays we stream generation zero at the same time. go on for an hour and a half two hours and uh, just have a bit of fun and uh, and play around face some hordes and, and do stupid crap really with that being said, let's crack on. Interior redesign. The graphical update isn't just environmental and exterior based. We'll also be introducing updated props, new textures, normal maps. Interior vortex painting and new props among other features. You'll find new models throughout the world and there'll be more to come as we move forward. This initial update will include a large chunk of redesign, but there'll be more to come in the future. We'll release a forum thread alongside the graphical update. This will allow the community to post suggestions on props that need updating. Below is a sneak peek at some of our interior design changes. Now that. That is it. That is cool. I love that. Just how dilapidated and run down it looks. But also the lighting. As they went into a little bit of detail in the last dev vlog... The lighting has changed completely, and you can see that really through that image, that how it lights up where the lamp is instead of just, you know, that, that light lighting up the whole room there. And the windows let light into certain areas now, which is going to be really, really cool. I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait. Ah, oh, here's the juicy bit. The electrical grid. As some of you may know, we've always planned for a fully functional you will start to see the beginnings of this system in the graphical update in the form of power lines and small substations. The power grid will be rather extensive even in its initial introduction. You will find multiple power line models and a detailed, well thought out grid system. Outside the future mechanics of providing power, these lines can be used as a guidance system. The image below details them rather nicely. Now I think that looks awesome. Just those power lines are really cool. As you can see there, we've got the large power lines, which are the red ones. Then the medium power lines are orange, and small power lines are blue. So the small ones look like they go primarily on the outer side of, of the map. And then the substations are the little dots. So how that's going to work, I'm not sure. The large power lines can be effectively used to help player lost in the woods and find their way back. These large power lines should stick out above the tree line in order for them to be visible from surrounding high ground. In addition, we could add small POIs around the path of these power lines to help lost players who might be in need of a place to cook food, purify water in order to survive. The way these power lines can be associated with a potential lifeline. I like that idea. That's really smart. So the small and medium power lines are used to connect towns and other POIs such as farms to large power lines. In addition to medium sized power lines could be used in addition, medium-sized power lines could be used to give the player a direct path to follow to the next town. The power lines can be used to guide the player to farms and other similar POIs which might be located out of town or even off the road. So I like that. That's, that's so cool. Oh, I love it. It's amazing. I can't wait for this. It's like when you're lost out in the open areas, that's, that's going to be really helpful. Especially sort of around here in these this fielded area. And um, Me personally, I get lost the most up here above Union Point, <clears throat> around these areas, just the top half of the map. So you go to Union Point, everything's great there, but then if you die there and it respawns you a bit further out, say around this area here, 
if you're a bit unfamiliar, it can take you a while to get your bearings. So that's going to be really nice as you, you'll be able to see that that power line from quite a long way off, which is good. And then you just make your way out to the main lines and just, just follow it all the way to the town. Now, how the power is actually going to work, I'm not too sure. They have said quite a while back um, that the Union Point power station here is going to be switched on and fully functional. And you'll have to get that running as a community as opposed to one person running it. Which, if that's the case, that's going to be really cool. But would would that mean that we, we get this powered and then once we've got the individual substations powered... We're not going to need the generators for the houses and things like that. I think that would be a really cool sort of way to go. I mean, if there's no power at Union Point Power Station, then you power up all the substations for that for, for your said town. Once the power station's up and running. But then, if the power station's not up and running, you could still use the old generator format. Um... I've got lots of questions. I've got loads. I really want to know. I'm intrigued. I really want to know how this is going to work. It could it could possibly be that you have to power up, say, Union Point Power Station, and then if you want to power up the old little town there, I think it's Sage Creek. No, that's Sage Creek. Let's say Addersfield, for argument's sake. You'd have to power up this substation here to power up Addersfield. Or will you just be able to power up one once Union Point's up, and then that'll supply power to the town? So many questions. I'm curious. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, but for me, that is it today. We're going to leave that one there. I want to say thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Check out all the links down below for the merch shop, all the other funky old stuff. And uh, we will see you on Monday with some more Survive the Nights.